YouTube star Claire Wineland, dead at 21, one week after undergoing a lung transplant. Popular YouTube star Claire Wineland has died one week after she underwent a lung transplant. The 21-year-old was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at birth and had undergone nine-hour transplant surgery on August 26. However the YouTuber suffered a stroke and her life support was turned off on Monday. The sad news was confirmed with a Facebook post by Claire's Foundation, Claire's Place, which seeks to assist cystic fibrosis families in need. Wineland had more than 250,000 followers on YouTube and nearly 100,000 on Instagram. Through both mediums she talked about her medical challenges. She battled to remove the stigma of talking about death and illness. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic disorder that affects the lungs, pancreas, liver, kidneys, and intestines. It makes it difficult to breathe and sufferers often cough up mucus. Lung transplants are often required to prolong sufferers' lives. In her final Instagram post, made from hospital as she awaited her transplant surgery, she wrote, I am grateful for all the people who donated to help me get through this transplant. I am grateful for the doctors that'll be scooping out these lungs and giving me some more life to work with. I'm grateful for the chance to keep being a person. I am grateful for my own head and for all the weird things in it. I am just really overwhelmingly grateful for all of this. There is no passionate rant to be had here I am just happy and thought I would let you all know. It was accompanied by an image taken with her best friends. The transplant surgery was said to be a success, but the 21-year-old subsequently had a stroke during recovery in the intensive care unit. Emergency brain surgery was administered, and Claire was placed in an induced coma. The foundation statement, posted late last night, read last night at 600 p.m., Claire Wineland our inspirational founder passed away. She was not in any pain and the medical staff said it was the most peaceful passing they had ever witnessed. She was surrounded by love and with her mother Melissa Yeager and father John Wineland, they saw her into this world for her first breath and were with her for her last. In Claire fashion, she is an organ donor. Claire's remarkable family were so happy for the other families that were now getting the calls that the organ they had long been waiting for was now available for transplant. They had been on the receiving end of that call just one short week ago. We know Claire was loved all over the world. Your prayers, support and encouraging words, have been a huge source of strength for her and her family. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your massive amazing outpouring of love. In the words of our precious founder Claire Wineland death is inevitable. Living a life we can be proud of is something we can control. ...have done for me. And so I just get like, I try and say things and everything that I say doesn't sound like enough. It doesn't even sound, I don't even feel like it's real. I really don't feel like it's real. Like I feel like I'm in like, I'm in like a haze and like none of it's real and I'm gonna like wake up and, and so I just don't even know how to make this video, which is I think why I've put it off for so long. And I did a little, I did a short thank you video just for the, um, the GoFundMe itself, but I feel like you all deserve like a, a genuine thank you and a detailed description of how the whole thing went because that was so, so insane. And it's like, it's like when something so unexpected happens, you just have no framework to even conceptualize how it happened because you just so were not expecting it to happen that you can't even wrap your brain around it. I mean, I think I spent the first week of the fundraiser not even really being able to look at it because it was so, like, overwhelming. I mean, it's just overwhelming that so many of you helped. I just don't even, like, I'm so, I'm genuinely so inspired by you guys. Like, I was just watching, I was sitting there and I was watching the stuff come in, it was all like $5, $10, $20 donations from you guys, and so many of you helped. I don't even, I don't even have a way to explain what you've done for me, and what you've done for my family. I, I, I mean, it's just, 
it's like unreal. Like, I mean, you've literally like saved my life and, and taken such a huge weight off of my shoulders and off of my parents' shoulders. I mean, and my family, not just my parents, everyone. And you know what's cool is like, I'm excited for the first time in this entire process. Like for the first time since agreeing to do transplant, I'm, I'm genuinely like so, so excited because like before it was just, it was bogged down with so much fear that I didn't let myself get excited about it. And now it's like, not only is it a possibility, but it's like something I'm gonna be able to do without dragging everyone else around me down and putting everyone in debt and making everyone horribly stressed out and losing everything else I have, which was pretty much what I was having to think about is like, if I go through transplant, does that mean losing my freedom? Does that mean losing, you know, does that mean making everyone else lose everything? Does that mean completely destroying everyone's life? <laughs> Which seems dramatic, but is actually kind of a possibility. I don't think, it's really hard to explain the kind of fear and like just this constant thing that sits on your shoulder when you have to worry about money and how you're gonna pay for things. I mean. It's interesting because when I started the foundation, when I was like 13, I really, I could see the effect that not being able to pay for um, housing and rent and car payments and food and all that, I could see the effect that has on a family, the way it makes dealing with an illness seem like a walk in the park. Like when you have to deal with not knowing how you're going to provide and take care of your family and take care of yourself and having to be so dependent on other people is just, I saw how much it broke people. Like I saw families who had a chance, like their kid had a chance, but they didn't have a chance because they didn't have resources. And so I knew from like a logical perspective that it was hard to not know how you're gonna be able to pay for, um, you know, housing and, travel and all the stuff that comes along with getting a transplant or not even just getting a transplant getting anything health related is so obnoxiously expensive i'm not even gonna go into that <laughs> that's not even to mention all of the co-pays and the you know stuff that you have to pay for out of pocket and and all that in our insurance system so i could see how hard it was on families but it's one thing to know from a logistical perspective what it does to a family and it's very different to be living it yourself. And it's very different to actually know what that feels like. And, and I, I know I talked about that in the, in the Ask video, but this past year I just like have this overwhelming compassion for the people that, that my foundation helps, not because, not because I feel like, oh no, it's so horrible, but because it's like, keeping your head afloat when you're not only scared about whether or not your kid or yourself is going to be alive, but you're also terrified of if you do stay alive, how are you going to afford to stay alive? I mean, the amount of just complete overwhelming terror that that puts on you. It's like, it's like, you know, when you get, I don't know how many people relate to this, but when you get really, really badly depressed and everything that you do, it's just like tinted with this feeling of gross fear like like nothing seems like it could ever be good again and everything you try and do just feels like empty and draining and terrifying it's kind of like that <laughs> it's like you put on these glasses where everything that you try and do in life feels completely futile because not only do you know if you're going to survive but you also don't know how you're going to afford to survive and there's something that that does to your head that just kills any of it's just terrifying straight up terrifying and um and i saw it in so many other families that i never really fully understood until i went through it myself and um so i don't i don't i don't have any words really to say how grateful i am like there's no way there's no way to describe it like, I can't, it can't just, it's like, it's way more than can be put into a video of like, thanks for donating, guys, it's great. Like, you don't know 
You have no idea what you did for us. How much you changed. Not just, like, what I can do, but you also took such a huge weight off of me that I just don't even know how to repay you. And I don't know how to say thank you enough, and everything feels shallow and hollow and not enough. It's interesting because, uh, first of all, I wasn't expecting the fundraiser to go off in the slightest, right? Like, I was so not ready for it to make that much money. I mean, we needed, what we needed was 50 to 100 um, grand. And once it got to be 100, we kept getting people saying that they wanted to give more and that they wanted it to be not just for the surgery, but for after the surgery, like for being able to, so that I could take off time and not have to work while I recover, which is a big thing, because you're not supposed to do anything for the year after. So then people were like, no, let's just keep going. <laughs> so then we raised the goal to not just cover the actual costs of going through the thing, but for also like for afterwards and for, um, for being able to, you know, take care of myself after. And I thought that once we did that, I thought people would lose interest. You know what I mean? Like, I thought that it would be like, be like, okay, okay, like her necessities are covered. She's going to have a place to live. She's going to have, you know, money to be able to get down to the hospital. She's going to be able to, you know, cover any of the costs of medications that come up or proceed, whatever, right? Like, she's good. I thought that people would lose interest, right? Like, I just assumed that people there's only so much people can give like I'm not in an against you guys way just like there's only so much that you guys can care I just didn't and then it just kept going like you guys just kept giving a shit and like and now like not only am I covered I'm like I'm okay I feel like I can breathe for the first time in so long and I'm really just inspired by you guys. Like, I know that that's normally the other way around, and I'm supposed to be the inspirational one here, but, like, you guys are just incredible. The fact that you all just donated as much as you could. I mean, I, like, I started sobbing when I started seeing the donations that were coming. It was all, like, $5, $10 donations that we got to $200,000 with $10 donations is just... It's just mind-boggling to me. I don't even... I'm just so honored. That I'm so grateful for you guys, and I'm just so... I'm so insanely honored that the people who follow me are so fucking cool. And I just, like... Oh. This past few weeks have been an insane roller coaster because I I lost weight and got taken off the transplant list, which was really heartbreaking. And I lost weight because I had lost my apartment and um, and I had to put my dog down, and so uh, I was really stressed. And then I was on this medication that made me horribly nauseous, and so I lost a lot of weight. <clears throat> and. Um, so they took me off the list, which was really scary. So I had to gain weight to be back on the list, and that's a lot harder <sighs> than people think it is when you have CF. So I had to go in the hospital and get hooked up to a bunch of stuff, and um, and then right when I got out, I got an infection. So <laughs> I've just been sick really, really bad since the beginning of the fundraiser. It was like a, it was like it was like I just kept crashing. The more the fundraiser was popping off, the more I crashed, which maybe it was stress, maybe it was overwhelming, I don't know, but now that my head's back on my shoulders and like I'm able to breathe again, literally, <laughs> and um, I'm just like sitting in it, you know, like when you sit or when something huge happens and then it finally sinks in, and I've just been laying around and, and my head, because you know how your head doesn't always catch up when big things happen, right? So like, my brain goes to like, this fear state of like, oh no, then I have to think about how we're gonna be able to manage this, and then I stop myself. And I'm like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be able to manage. <laughs> and like, and I keep doing that. I do that like five times a day. Um, 
God, I just, I know I'm blabbering. I just don't even, I don't know. I really don't know how to properly thank everyone. And it feels like I can't, I feel like I can't make any more videos because like I can't like say anything besides thank you. I feel like I'm gonna have to start like my intro for every video from now on is gonna have to be like a sobbing thank you because I, everything that I, everything that I do from here on out is because of you guys. So I guess now it's just a matter of getting the lungs and like doing this, you know? Um, there's really nothing else in the way. So I guess let's do this.